オーズ。I'm Watanabe Shinji, the Lensh of Yuigaryu Karate. Today, I will explain how to do classic n i h a n d for actual fight. Finally, I guess. I'm very sorry for have kept you waiting. But before that, have you practiced the posture and walking that I explained in the previous video? As I repeatedly explained in that video, if you can't do the correct posture and walking, there is no point in doing kata. So, if you are like that, there is no point in watching this video. Please don't watch because of time wasting. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Please watch it.、Uh, then, let's get going. o s s First, Uh, please watch my n i h a n c h This is an older, closer to the、uh, closer to original version of n i h a n c h than the one practiced in many schools today, and it is a slightly modified of it for beginners. n i h a n c h Well,、uh, like this. Open both knees outward and do it without moving the hips. If you are familiar with it, you may have noticed that the n i h a n c h I just showed you is very similar to Motobu Choki's one. On the other hand, there is also n i h a n c h where the feet and knees are turned inward. And the hips are used to move in this way. This is a new way modified by Itos Anko, although it is now rather the majority. There are several other characteristics of the movement that he modified, but it is not the main point of this article to clarify them. So I will not go into them now. But、uh, please understand that the Naihanch I just showed you is one of the correct Naihanch too. Let's get back to the topic. What is Naihanch? What is the feature of Naihanch? If I'm asked so, there are many ways to explain it. But one of the explanations is that when the arms are moving, The legs are not moving, and when the legs are moving, the arms are not moving. It means it can say that n i h a n c h is the kata for learning to divide the body into upper and lower parts and move them separately.、Uh, another way to describe this. Dividing the body into upper and lower parts and moving them separately is um, well, um, please imagine a tank. n i h a n c h is the kata for becoming a tank. From the belly down is the crawler part. You use this part to move freely. And from the chest up is the cannon butt. You will be able to fire the cannon at will without being affected by the movement from the crawler.
This is the Nai Hachi movement. If you've just seen my moves for the first time, how funny. You call the punch that you use only your arm a cannon. You might think so. But you can learn more about why this punch is so powerful. In the video, get power by Nai Hachi. Must watch. Unfortunately, it's a Japanese version, but it has a English subtitles. Back to the topic, as I've said many times before, the posture and how to walk are really important. If you don't have a good crawler part, you won't be able to onboard a powerful cannon on it. Now, let's take a closer look at each movement of the nai hanch that I just showed you. It can be done on the right or the left, but the right movement is the common nai hanch. So, I'll explain to use that one. First, uh, stand up straight with the weight on your heels. Then, bow. Uh, at this time, make sure your posture does not collapse like this. Keep maintaining your posture and whoa. Uh, drop your hips and lift your hands, then turn them. At this point, Close your hands and extend your arms as far as possible. Your arms should not be bent in this way. The arms will never be fully extended. But try to stretch it as much as possible. On the other hand, if your hands are uncrossed, your arms will be fully extended. But this is also not good. First, uh, look to the left while standing firmly. Next, look to the right. Hold Sadachi. Set the stance. High Shuke. The height of the right arm should be a little lower than shoulder height. And twist slightly. The left hand. Hikite is position should be one fist below the solar plexus line. Don't let your shoulders rise. Drop them down. This will continue to be the same after this. Then the elbow punch. Do the elbow punch toward this position. That is diagonally in front of you. The chest remains tall. Do not pull this arm hard and use the chest opening and closing to strike it. This is not good. Uh, needless to say, but make sure you never break the stance. Keep your stance as tensing the knees outward throughout the nine hand movement. The left fist should not stick out above the right arm. It should be tucked into the frame of the right arm. Look the front, place both fists at your side. Your left arm is at the level of the solar plexus and your right fist is one fist below the leg. Then look to the side, Gedan Barai and Gyakuzuki. The Gedan Barai don't go too high. The angle of the arm should be close to parallel with the side. The Tsuki is Gyakuzuki, not Kagizuki.
the height of the suki should be at the level of the thread trap axis. The hikitezu fist should be attached to the hip bone. Not here. Then move as if someone is pulling the fist and as if you are following them without losing your post posture. Once you have set the stance, face the front and uchiuke. The uchiuke the fist should be at shoulder height and the elbows should be at a 90 degree. Then, joge uke. This joge uke should not do small. Make sure that as if your elbows are touching each other, and then do it with big moves. And here is Uraken, the back fist. Do not relax and snap it. It's not good. Tighten your elbows and extend your arms to the end as if you are doing a tsuki. Pull the arm back and press it on the wrist of the opposite arm. Do not press it to the side, but keep it as close as possible to the center. Be careful to not uh, be careful not to let your chest just dent in and round your back. I'll say it again and again. Maintain your posture and stance throughout the nine hand movements. Turn to the side and Namigaish. Pull up only your legs. Uh, pull up only your leg, not moving your upper body as possible. And then lower them as gently as you can. Don't shift your weight to the left or right like this. Um, while maintaining your posture, move only one leg without moving the other as much as possible. Then, Uchiuke. Not need to twist your forearms. The Uchiuke's elbow remains on top of the opposite wrist. Do not move away like this. Look to the opposite side and then Namigaish Soto Uke. The Uke's elbow remains on top of the opposite wrist. Look to the front, put the both fists aside, then look to the side, Yodizuki. This should be done as if the movement of the front hand through the rear hand and the rear hand follows it. The height of the front hand's tsuki should be slightly below the shoulders. The height of the rear hand's tsuki is the strap plexus. From here, pull back your right fist and then repeat the same movement in the opposite direction. The height of the haishuke is the same height as the mighty tsuki slightly below the shoulders. Twist it a little. The hikite, the hikite is one fist lower than the solar plexus. The elbow punch strikes towards the front diagonal. Your right fist is in the frame of the left arm. Look the front, place both fists at your side, and look to the side. Kedan Barai, Kyakuzuki. And the Kedan Barai should be parallel to your side. Then, Kyakuzuki, this height is the solar plexus, the hikite is the hip bone. Walk without making any 
Raj Kara movement and and sets the stance and when you have set the stance, look the front and uchiuke. The height of the fist is shoulder height. The elbow angle is 90 degrees. Do the joge uke with big as if your elbows are touching each other. Keep the elbow squeezed. The raken is to extend the arm to the end. Press the, press the elbow on the wrist of the opposite arm and press it on the center. Not here. Pull up your leg, being careful not to lose your posture and lower them as gently as possible. Then, Uchiuke. Turn your head to the other side, Namigaish, and Sotoke. Uh, while doing this, while doing this, keep the Uketa's elbow on the wrist of the opposite arm, and the elbow angle is 19 degrees. Look to the front, take, the, take both your fists at your side. Then, look to the side, and Ryotezuki. Just like the front hand, pull the rear hand. The front, as the front hand is lower a little than shoulders, and the rear hand is throat plexus height. Finally, the arms are brought back. And the first movement is twist, ending with the ball, while maintaining the posture. That's it. Uh, this is how I do my hand in practice. Awesome. Uh, now uh, let's watch the actual my hand through again. My hand. How was that? Uh, I hope you will learn it correctly and practice it repeatedly. And now we've seen the correct way to do each of the movement in my Yuigaryu Naihanshi. But as I said in the previous video, if you can't explain why this is the correct way to do it, even if you can do all the Naihanshi movements correctly, you don't understand or know Naihanshi in real means. This is not limited to this Yuigaryu Naihanshi. You are probably doing a different Naihanshi in a different school now, and that Naihanshi will have a different, different movement than the one I just described. For example, uh, regarding the movement from Kedambarai to Gyakuzuki. Uh, some schools hikite is main high position and some schools low position. If you are in the school with high hikite, ask yourself why does it have to be high? If it's a school that makes it lower, why does it have to be lower? Can you explain it? Or you may have run the Kagizuki instead of the gyakuzuki. If you do gyakuzuki, you will be told, no, that's wrong. Can you explain why kagizuki is correct and gyakuzuki is wrong? 
If you can't explain such as every single movement, then you don't really know about even your own style of naihachi. That's what I think. So, from the next article, let's take a closer look at each movement of naihachi. What is the real meaning behind each movement? What is the hidden purpose of those movements? Let's try to figure it out. Please, stay tuned. Oz. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I was going to end it that. But then, I thought I'd better add this part. As I've said many times before, if you know the correct movement of the kata, but don't understand why it's correct, you don't understand that kata in the real means. It's my opinion. However, the most important thing is to repeat the correct movement, not to understand why the movement is correct. So first, please practice naihan repeatedly, following the notes mentioned earlier. It's okay to understand the true meaning behind each movement later. Even if you don't understand the meaning of the movement, if you practice the correct kata correctly, you will naturally acquire the necessary sensation and the necessary ability. The correct kata is made that way. That is the wonderful thing about the kata training method. If I guess, uh, maybe that's the way karate was practiced in the past. If the sensei said, do it this way, you just do it that way. Maybe they were not allowed to have any doubts. From the sensei's point of view, it is not that he is arrogant, unfriendly, or not enthusiastic about teaching, but he was probably checking at the qualities of his student in this way. Is this guy doing eagerly just what I'm told to do? He was making sure of it. Some student did as he was told, but may not have been as enthusiastic. Another student was just asking, what is this, what is that? And if, he, if, and if he didn't get an answer, he gets frustrated and wasn't doing it. Others may have been enthusiastic, but added his own interpretations and did not follow the sensei's instructions. Such students might have been dismissed by sensei as he has no qualities, or quit from themselves spontaneously, and only the very few students who remain, the ones who are judged to be trustworthy, who silently and diligently repeated what they were told, were dealt with. As I mentioned earlier, a correct kata is designed so that if you practice it correctly and repeatedly, you will naturally acquire the necessary senses and abilities. Then, when the sensei sees that the student is starting to get it, he can tell the student, this is what it's all about. The student will instantly understand and say, oh, I didn't know that, but now I see. In this way, the hidden essence, the secret, has been handed down. On the contrary, uh, when he was asked, what is this, why is that, and need to return some kind of answer. In such a case, a false answer prepared for convenience, that is bunkai, I believe so. After all, there are only a few people who have been told the hidden essence or the secret from the sensei, and those who have, don't talk about the content openly. 
On the other hand, there are many people who have had a bunkai explanation. This is what the sensei explains the meaning of this movement in this kata. Yes, I heard that too. Me too. Me too. This is how the mistake of interpreting kata in terms of bunkai spread throughout the kata world. That's my thought. I'll have to make a video one day to explain this, the rise called bunkai, in detail. Get back to the main topic, uh, but the training method called kata is really amazing. If you practice the correct kata correctly, you will naturally get the necessary senses and the necessary abilities, even if you don't know the true meaning of each movement. The correct kata is made so that. To use an analogy, it's like a smartphone. Even if you don't understand the meaning of each component, if you assemble it correctly based on the right blueprint, it will function properly. So, first of all, uh, please practice Naihan repeatedly. As for the next video, uh, the analysis and clarification of each movement of Naihanshi. I'm sorry, uh, but I'm not sure when I'll be able to post it. I've been busy lately. Um, even if I talk only about making videos, I can't upload the videos of Kudo techniques recently. So I need to work on that as well. Uh, I'd like to do it as soon as possible, uh, but I'm not sure what my plans are. So, in the meantime, please wait patiently while practicing Naihanshi. Oh yes, uh, if I get any questions, I'll make it a priority to answer them. Then, see you again. Os.